All right, this is 2003, question two. Uh, a rigid five liter cylinder contains two point, um, 24.5 grams of nitrogen gas and 28 grams of oxygen gas. Calculate the total pressure. Well, this is kind of, um, so Dalton's law of partial pressure says the total pressure in a container is equal to the sum of the individual pressures. So we're gonna have to find the pressure of the nitrogen, and then we're gonna have to find the pressure of the oxygen, and then we're gonna have to add them together. And so, um, Keeping in mind that PV equals nRT, this is the most important gas law, and that P is equal to nRT over V. Um, and so what happens is to get the number of moles, I'm going to take 24.5 grams of nitrogen. And if you look online, um, we have more sig figs now, so the answer is going to be slightly different. And then 14.01 is what N is, so N2 is 28.02 grams in one mole. And so we end up with um, 0.874 um, moles of N2. And then, but we have 28.0 grams of oxygen. Well, oxygen is 6 a piece, so O2 is 32.00. By the way, this has three sig figs and this has four, so we get three. Um, I think the reason the answer is different online is they have 28.0. So there's 32 grams in a mole. And um, so let me do this. Grams cancels with grams, grams cancels with grams, and this ends up being 0.875 moles of oxygen. Um, and the interesting thing is there's a lot of ways to do this, um, but I think the easiest way is to just um, add all the moles together. Because remember, all gases um, act the same in terms of the gas laws. And so if I add 0.874 and 0.875, if I add those together, I end up with... Um, if I do 0.874 moles of one gas plus uh, 0.875 moles of another gas, and I just add those together, I end up with 1.749 moles. Now, the other way to do this problem is you could do this and get this answer, and then you could do this and get this answer, and then add them together, or I could add them together here. I think the most, just so you get the right answer, it doesn't matter how you do it, so P equals total number of moles of gas. You can add them all together, divided by V. And so N, I just figured out, was 1.749 moles. And then R, again, if you're looking at the scoring guidelines, um, um, we're keeping more sig figs now, but basically, so 0 0.08206. They used to do 0 0.0821, so you might get a slightly different answer. And this is liters, atmospheres, per mole K. And then somewhere up in the problem, they told you that the temperature was 298. And so um, the temperature is 298K. And if you want to put a one here, you can. And then V is up in the problem. They told you that that was five liters, 5.00, so three sig figs. Um, 5.00 liters, and so liters cancels with liters, and K cancels with K, and mole cancels with mole, and nothing cancels with atmospheres, which is way cool, because um, we're trying to get atmospheres, and when I did it, I got 8.55 atmospheres. Um, again, you can do 0.874 here and get this pressure answer and then do it again with 0.875 and then add them together and you also get 8.55. Um, there's more than one way to skin a cat. It's fine, however you want to do it. Okay, next page. Um, the temperature of a gas mix mixture in the cylinder is decreased to 280. Interesting, pay attention. I'm gonna do this right here, 280. For some reason, now we're only carrying two sig figs. Calculate each of the following, the mole fraction. Well, <laughs> mole fraction is weird. Not really, it's the fraction of moles. So what happens is 
we just up in part A figured out that we had 0.874 moles of N2 and that we had uh, 1.749 moles total. And so if you do that, this has three sig figs, this has four, you get 0 0.500. Now, no units, because moles cancels with moles. And basically it's saying that 50%, although we're expressing it as a decimal, so 0.5 moles. And you know, if you go back to this page and just look, 0.874 and 0.875, those are the same to the thousandth place. It's just a sig fig thing. So you can see just looking, Roughly, it's 50-50, and so that should not be all that shocking. Um, so that's the mole fraction. Mole fractions have no units. And then the next thing is, what's the partial pressure of the nitrogen in there? Now, this is the pressure at the new temperature. Otherwise, we could just use the answer. So NRT over V, and we just figured out that it was 0.874 moles. Again, if it bugs you and you want a one here, you can. R is 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole K. In this problem, unlike part A, this is 280 K, and they gave it to you. It's only one sig fig, or two sig figs, not three. And then 5.00 liters, and I'm just gonna grab a different color. But this, you can see that this has three sig figs, and this actually has four, and this has two, and this has three. And so when you pop it in your calculator, um, what comes out, can't be facetious right now, but 4.01634464 atmospheres, because mole cancels with mole, and liter cancels with liter, and K cancels with K. But because you only get two sig figs, the best answer is 4.0 atmospheres. All right. Um, if the cylinder develop, develops a pinhole size leak and some of the gaseous mixture escapes, would the ratio in the cylinder increase, decrease, or remain the same? Um, just a fire answer. Um, interesting. For whatever reason, I don't have the ratio they're looking for, but it's on your worksheet. Okay, so they want to know if you did the moles of N2 over the moles of O2 and you did a pinhole size leak, um, would this ratio stay the same or would you end up with um, this ratio going um, smaller, or this ratio going bigger? This is interesting. This is um, Graham's law of effusion, but basically if you have two gases at the same temperature, the kinetic energy of both gases is the same. So the kinetic energy of nitrogen equals the kinetic energy of oxygen if the temp is the same, if both gases are at the same temperature. Now, the interesting thing is kinetic energy is m one half mv squared, um, and then that equals 1 half m of oxygen times the velocity of oxygen squared. Okay, this is hugely important that that's squared. So remember, two gases at the same temp and pressure or identical conditions have the same energy. Now, as you can see this, you know, they both have a half, so you can kind of ignore that. But basically, because the mass of the nitrogen is less than the mass of the oxygen, so keep in mind, this number is smaller than this number. Well, if these are going to be equal and this number is smaller and this number is larger, then this velocity has to be larger and this velocity has to be smaller or they won't be equal. And it leads to what Higgins probably said um, is that the lightest gases move the fastest. So um, light, light gases um, move faster. And when I teach this concept, I'll say thing, I'll use this football analogy or I'll use the bird analogy, but if you watch football, you know, who is going to generally be faster? The big heavy lineman whose job is to just plant his feet and protect the quarterback or the running back or the wide receivers whose job is to get down the field as fast as they can. 
And so basically in football, you see that the lighter athletes move faster, the big heavy linemen move slower. In the bird world, you know, a hummingbird, tiny, tiny, tiny moves fast. An ostrich, big, big, big moves slow. I mean, don't take it to extremes. But basically, in order for two gases to have the same kinetic energy, um, the gas that's lighter has to have a higher velocity or their energies won't be equal. So basically what this is saying is if you have a canister with a pin, so, pin, pin, what do they say, pinhole size leak, the nitrogen is going to leave faster than the oxygen. See, this is, by the way, this is what they do on the AP exam. The one and all, if I taught you, we taught you Graham's law of diffusion, which says lighter gases move faster. Um, but they can't just say what's Graham's law of diffusion. They have to um, write it like this. Now, I'm going to grab um, the pen. Um, I'm going to come back up here. Now, here's the deal. So what's going to happen is if there's a pinhole size leak, the nitrogen gas is going to leave faster. And so this is going to go down faster than this. And so one of the things hopefully I've taught you by now, but maybe not, is that on the AP exam, when they ask you a question, the very first thing you should do is answer the question. Um, if the cylinder develops a pin size pinhole size leak and some of the gases mixture escapes, would the ratio in the cylinder increase, decrease, or remain the same? Now remember, this is decreasing faster than this. So the first thing that you would have to say is the ratio would decrease. Answer the question first. The question is, does the ratio increase, decrease, or remain the same? Um, sorry, would decrease, not decreases. Um, and so the other thing that you'll notice is it says justify your answer. Well, I've just been doing that in explaining the problem. So you would go through and say, um, you would say something on the order of uh, the kinetic energy of the nitrogen is the same as the kinetic energy of the oxygen if the temperature, if the conditions are the same. And therefore, the lighter gases move, need to, would be moving faster. So the nitrogen has a higher velocity than the oxygen. And so the nitrogen leaves faster. And then you could go on to say, this number is decreasing faster than this number. Interesting thing, they're both decreasing because there's a hole. That's what happens when you puncture a tire. But this is leaving faster than this. And so the ratio decreases. I hope I did a good job explaining that. Um, a different rigid 5-point liter cylinder contains a 1.76 moles of NO at 298. Um, a 1.76 mole sample of O2 is added to the cylinder. Um, okay, first thing, write the balanced equation. So this is what I would say. Um, they're telling you that NO gas, and then you have some O2 gas. And then these come together and they make NO2 gas. And the question is, um, what's the reaction? Well, you always have to balance one nitrogen, one nitrogen. One, two, three, one, two. I call this the even odd rule. I'll put a two here because you're never going to get one and two is three balanced with an odd side balanced with the even side. So I put a two there. I have to put a two there. Watch what happens. I have two nitrogen, two nitrogen, two oxygen here, two oxygen here, which is four, and two times two is four. Okay, this is a pretty tough problem. The next part says calculate the total pressure in atmospheres after the reaction is complete. Now, I don't know if I did this. Okay, so this is a very tough problem. Very tough. Um, so we have two... NO2 gas plus O2 gas goes to um, 2 NO2 gas. Now let me tell you why this is difficult. Um, they're telling you that this is 0.176 moles and this is 0.0176 moles. Now remember at the beginning of a chemical reaction um, this is the beginning, and I don't have to have units because I've 
Okay, now let me put the image here. In the very beginning, you have none of this. And what happens is at the end, at the end, you're going to have all this and one of these is going to be gone. The limiting reactant is going to be gone. Here's why I think this problem is particularly difficult. And I'm going to put a C here for change. This is a two to one mole ratio. This is a one to one mole ratio. And um, what we know from titration problems that, from last year, which I think is the toughest part of chemistry, um, is that this is the limiting reactant because the stoichiometry says you, in order for these two to run out at the same time, you would have to have twice as much of this and you don't, you have the same amount. And so what happens is all of this is gonna go away. And then because this is a two, this is a two, this is gonna go up 0.176 because this is a one to one mole ratio. So this has to be a one to one mole ratio. But this is interesting only half of this is going to go away. So I get to take 0 0.01760 and divide it by two because for every this, two molecules of this react with one molecule of that. And so only half of this is going to be gone. And at the end, you have zero moles here and you have 0.176 moles here. But the interesting thing is you have some excess oxygen in there. And remember, any gas, so basically, this is like an ice chart. So this is zero, because the reaction stops when one of the reactants runs out. This is 0 0.0176 minus 0 0.088. And then this is zero plus 0 0.176. And so the cool part about this problem is the total moles of gas in there is going to be 0 0.8088 moles of pressure coming from the oxygen and 0.176 moles coming from the nitrogen dioxide. And when you add those together, you get 0.264 moles. And then again, how many times have you seen this equation? PV equals NRT, so P equals NRT over V. And so what happens is this is 0.264 moles if you want it over one, you can. And then this is 0 0.08206 atmospheres times liters over mole times K. And now we're back to 298. So this is 298K. And then put a one there if you want it. And then one over five liters. And then this cancels this, and this cancels this, and this cancels this. And if you do that, you will get 1.29 atmospheres. Okay, this, again, this is a tough problem because it, it has the concepts of limiting reactants inside. Um, much like titration, it makes it a very difficult problem.